Today is Katara, the Eve of Demkat, which is Ethiopian Epiphany. So for all Orthodox Christians all over the world, we wish you to have a happy Katara. Hello and welcome. This is Amhara Media Corporation and you are watching our Wednesday after live from Bahardar, Ethiopia. And I am Fikradi Zodu. Stay with us. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed visited the Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church under construction in Abu Dhabi, the United Arab Emirates. Let's get more from the report. The government of the United Arab Emirates had given 70,682 square meters of land for the construction of the church. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed wrote on his Facebook that he visited the Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church under construction in Abu Dhabi. The premier thanked them on behalf of the Ethiopian people and government. The temporary site of the church is almost at completion. He said that they have been promised by the relevant officials that everything possible will be done to enable the celebration of the upcoming Ethiopian Epiphany at this site. The premier stressed that when friends do this for them, it is a great lesson for them to draw upon that. They need to do more for their own people collectively. He further noted that places like this are the centers of Ethiopian history and diplomacy. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed is in Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates, to attend the Abu Dhabi Sustainability Week. According to the federal police, preparations have been finalized to peacefully celebrate the Ethiopian Epiphany in Tigray region. Abba Brahani will give us the detail. Tigray region coordinator at the federal police, Deputy Commissioner Habta Mukasa told Ethiopian news agency that the police have finalized their preparations for the peaceful celebration of Epiphany in the region. He added that the public is working in collaboration with the security forces with a view to peacefully observing this annual outdoor religious festival. The deputy commissioner said that, following the recent peace agreement, various religious events have been observed peacefully, noting that the public are extending strong cooperation in this regard. According to deputy commissioner Habtamu, Ethiopian Epiphany and its Eve Katara will be celebrated in similar manner. The Ethiopian Epiphany Festival has been strengthening the unity of the Ethiopian people beyond its being a religious ceremony. Culture and Sports Minister Kajela Merdasa said that the Ethiopian Epiphany, which will be celebrated tomorrow across the country, is a festival that strengthens the unity of the people beyond religious values. Let's get more from Brahan Wargana. At a press conference held in connection with Ethiopian Epiphany, the minister said the festival is an important celebration that strengthens the unity of the Ethiopian people. The minister further extended his best wishes to Ethiopian Christians who commemorate the baptism of Jesus Christ in Jordan River. He pointed out that Ethiopia is endowed with immense cultural, religious, and historical heritages of which the Ethiopian Epiphany is one. The Ethiopian Epiphany, inscribed among intangible cultural heritages of humanity by UNESCO in 2019, attracts many tourists to the country. According to the minister, it is therefore necessary to protect and develop what is good and beneficial for the people's unity and enable the nation to also earn income from the sector. Kajala noted the festival is now a world heritage and beyond Ethiopia, stressing the need to preserve and protect it. Culture and Sports State Minister Wokanash Buru said on her part, it should be everyone's responsibility to pass the cultural values of the people to the next generation. Tumkat Ethiopian Epiphany is one of the most significant religious and social events for followers of Ethiopian Orthodox Christians. It is a very colorful festival celebrated all over Ethiopia to commemorate the baptism of Jesus Christ. The commemoration starts on the eve of the main festival on 18 January. The eve is known as Katara, which means blocking the flow of water for the blessing of the celebrants. On the eve of Katara, people escort their parish church tabot, replicas of the Ark of the Covenant to Tumkata Bar, a pool, a river, or artificial reservoir transported by a priest of the parish and accompanied by a great ceremony. 
Ethiopia Tourism and Hotel Market Association president said that close to 2 million tourists are expected at the Ethiopian Epiphany Festival, which is expected to mainly be celebrated in Gondor. Mwanda Muluye will give us the detail. Association President Gitahun Alamu said the association is eyeing for more local and international tourists than in the previous celebrations when the figures were very low due to security and COVID-19 pandemic. The colorful outdoor festivity inscribed as an intangible world heritage under UNESCO will be celebrated from Wednesday to Thursday all over Ethiopia with various ceremonies that depict religious and cultural values. The annual Ethiopian Epiphany commemorated the baptism of Jesus Christ by John the Baptist in the River Jordan. Speaking to Ethiopian news agency, the president said the association has introduced a tourist package for those who come to attend the Epiphany celebration. For Epiphany, we do have like uh, under our association, we do have like a good package uh, starting from uh, the airport up to Gondar. Gondar is very well known. So we have a lot of option uh, to stay more uh, time in Gondar and also uh, in Addis Ababa. Uh, nowadays package is ready, the tourists are coming so it becomes you know, good and good in the near future. According to him, the association warmly welcomes foreign tourists takes them to Gondor and returns them to their country of origin. He said due to the peaceful resolution of the conflict in the northern part of the country, the number of tourists is expected to increase. The president stated that some 1.9 million local tourists and more than 2,000 foreign tourists are expected to attend the Epiphany celebration in Gondor. Gitaun further stated that the association has helped about 75 hotels to be disinfected to improve their adherence to the COVID-19 protocol. Ethiopian ambassadors and diplomatic missions have vowed to promote Ethiopia's splendid tourism destinations to their respective countries of motion. Let's get more from Mwada Muluye. Officials of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs Heads of mission and pertinent institutions under the ministry have visited the Gorgora project, which is among one of the three tourism destination projects under construction as part of the Dine for Ethiopia initiative. Speaking with the Ethiopian news agency after the visit, the ambassadors have said that by developing its natural resources, the Dine for Ethiopia project will enable the country to benefit from its tourism sector. The ambassadors further noted that they will work harder to make foreign visitors come and visit the projectors. They also said that they will promote tourist destinations in the country. Ethiopian ambassador in Turkey, Adam Mohammed, said the Gurgura development project is a major tourism destination being carried out by preserving nature. <laughs> What is being built here is magnificently beautiful. It can be a huge tourism destination. It shows that we are able to achieve by ourselves everything we are amazed at seeing in other countries. This is what it means by loving a country and building its image. Therefore, all of us have to know about this project and support so that it can be realized. The Gogura project resembles with other projects found in the world that we have been greatly surprised with, he said, adding that it is everyone's responsibility to promote these new tourist attractions to the world. Ethiopian ambassador to Canada, Fitzumarga, on his part said, Dying for Ethiopia projectors will contribute to bringing out the natural reach of the country and help in image building. He said that these projectors should be promoted as their contribution to generate income is huge. I wonder what a tourism site it will become. It will drive high-level meetings and conferences to take place here. It can generate a huge revenue for the tourism sector. The beautiful scenery of the place, accompanied by its conducive weather condition, can drive tourists all the year round, and it can be a huge industry by itself. <laughs> 
Ethiopian ambassador in Zimbabwe, Rashid Mohammed, on his part said, Dying for Ethiopian projectors can largely play a crucial role in displaying Ethiopia's natural resources that have been out of sight from the world, with a view to promoting the country's tourism and strengthen economic benefits. <laughs> Gorgora is a massive natural endowment that we were blind to it, but now we have opened our eyes. This enormous natural resource can benefit not only Ethiopia but also others. When we go back to the countries we are assigned, we will promote that Ethiopia is conducive for tourism. It is a moment by which we understand our people deserve much more than this. Overall, I'm very much impressed. Ethiopia le tourism bata michu yonech monwan. His bachinum kazi bala migaba monun bade mbe tega nzabu ni bats project nona bata mne tere na kuto. Ethiopian ambassador to Pakistan Jamal Becker indicated that since the major work of missionaries is economic diplomacy, the diplomats are expected to help the country generate income by promoting its development achievements. The major role of we the ambassadors is economic diplomacy. Among the economic diplomacy, tourism is one. It is one which is shining among the indigenous reform. Our key role on worlds will be promoting our tourist destinations and we have to ensure the development of our country. Foreign Affairs State Minister Ambassador Burtukan Ayano on her part pointed out that in the future time for Ethiopia projects are expected to become major tourist destinations in Ethiopia. Such a tourist destination has a great opportunity to the locality in creating jobs and the ambassadors will promote this to tourists when they go back to their assigned country. Moreover, they will raise support for the realization of the project. She also stated that the projects are symbolic development workers that Ethiopians can commence and complete development projects on time. According to the manager of Gorgora Project, the glorious Gorgora Project is close to completion. At the final phase of the construction is well underway. Brahan Warkan will give us the detail. Gorgora, along with Wenji and Koisha Project, is part of the national projects initiated by Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed in 2020 to preserve natural resources and unleash tourism potentials in the country. As part of Dine for Nation initiative, Gorgora Project aims to have an immense contribution to boost and expand the tourism side of Northern Ethiopia. High-level officials from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and ambassadors representing Ethiopia in various countries, among others, have visited the progress of the Gorgora Project. Praising the progress of the project with quality and speed, they said the project is a heritage that can drive Ethiopia's tourism growth forward. Manager of Gogora Project, Fasasafa, said the construction of the project is well underway with maintaining quality and speed. According to the manager, the construction of amphitheater that has been built on Lake Tana as well as the port and other service provider facilities have been completed. Noting the completion of road construction, which is part of the project, he said other construction activities also reached to the final stage. According to the manager, activities are well underway to complete the final phase of the construction within three months with full dedication. He affirmed that once the construction of the project gets completed, Gorgora will be one of the glorious sites of Ethiopia with its gorgeous scenery. Proceeding to news beyond borders.
BBC, BBC is seeking a rising star of African journalism for the BBC News Kwamla Dumer Award. Now in its eighth year, journalists from across Africa are invited to apply for the award, which aims to uncover and promote fresh talent from the continent. The winner will spend three months at the BBC headquarters in London, gaining skills and experience. Applications close on 14th February 2023. The award was established to honor Komla Dumer, an exceptional Ghanaian broadcaster and presenter for BBC World News, who died suddenly, aged 41, in 2014. Dumer's widow, Kwansema Dumer, said she was proud of her husband's impact at the BBC and also said her family were thankful to the BBC for remembering him. Through the prize, the BBC is encouraging journalists across Africa to apply for the prize, which seeks to promote and celebrate outstanding journalistic talent living and working on the continent. The first ever TikTok Creator Awards took place in Kenya's capital, Nairobi, over the weekend held to celebrate TikTokers from sub-Saharan Africa. The nominees were chosen by TikTok in recognition of the immense talent and creativity they brought to the platform in the past year. TikTokers, or creators as they are known on the platform, make short-form vertical videos with many of the African nominees showcasing their dance moves, beauty tips and cooking skills. TikTok's head of the continent programming in sub-Saharan Africa, Bonisawa Sidawaba, said, With this inaugural award, TikTok's aim to give creators and sub-Saharan Africa the recognition they deserve and to encourage them to tell the African story while spreading joy at all times. The winners and runner-ups represented the four regions, West Africa, Southern Africa, East Africa and sub-Saharan Africa. Somalia's government forces have taken the port town of Haradre and nearby Galkat town in central Somalia in one of their most significant victories since launching an offensive last year. Let's get more from the report. According to top officials, Somalia's armed forces have captured a strategic coastal town that the Al-Shabaab terror group had held for more than a decade. Defense Minister Abdul Qadir Mohamed Noor said in a broadcast on a state-owned television that Government forces on Monday took the port town of Haradure as well as the nearby town of Galkad in central Somalia's Galmudok region. Defense Minister Noor said Haradure and Galkad districts have been taken from the hands of the Al-Shabaab terrorists. The minister added that this means Al-Shabaab is overpowered and gone and the remaining towns will also be liberated soon. Haradure was a major base for pirates hijacking merchant ships until 2011. It was later taken over by Al-Shabaab which first rose up against the government in 2007 before pledging allegiance to Al-Qaeda. A senior Puntland Force officer, Moulid Muhad, told Reuters news agency that also on Monday, government forces acting jointly with militias and regional forces from Galmudak and forces from the neighboring region of Puntland captures El Dahire, another town in Galmudak. Deputy Telecommunications Minister Hussein Ahmed, one of several senior officials embedded with the troops that advanced on Haradire, told Agence France Press that the port had been a key supply route for Al Shabaab for both people and goods. Al Shabaab spokespersons could not immediately be reached for a comment. This is all we got for today. This is Amhara Media Corporation Hubert Channel, and you're watching our daily update live from Bahar Dari Goodbye and have a nice cataract. Oh, 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 oh,